What is Ash Wednesday? Why do we burn palm branches from Palm Sunday to make ashes? And then why do we put those ashes on our foreheads in the sign of the cross? On today's episode of the Methodical Method, we are going to explore the history and the tradition of Ash Wednesday, the day that marks the beginning of the season Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Methodical Methodist Podcast. I'm your host, the Reverend Andrew Lay. And if you like this show, I hope that you might take a minute to write a review, subscribe, uh, rate the show um, so that more people can find it. You can look me up on Facebook at facebook.com slash methodicalpod, and you can find me on Instagram as well. My handle is at methodicalpod, so be sure to check me out. I want to announce uh, that I have actually written a uh, new Lenten book entitled Palms, Passion, and Resurrection, Holy Week According to Mark's Gospel. Uh, The book is designed to be a devotional resource for those seeking a deeper connection to God in the Lenten season. In each chapter, uh, we see Jesus journey through the different events of Holy Week according to Mark's Gospel. And so I hope that you can uh, maybe check that out. Um, You can get it um, on Amazon and on uh, parsonsporch.com. I'd love for you to check it out and leave a review. Lent is a season of 40 days excluding Sundays, and it begins on Ash Wednesday. This season of Lent helps us prepare for the coming of Jesus' resurrection on Easter Sunday. During Lent, we recall First, when Jesus went out into the wilderness and fasted for 40 days and was tempted by Satan as he prepared for the beginning of his earthly ministry. As the Gospel of Mark says, And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Like Jesus' time in the wilderness, we too are invited into a season of fasting, as we examine the condition of our hearts and of our spirits. Traditionally, Christians around the world participate in the season of Lent by giving something up, like chocolate or candy or a favorite soft drink, maybe even coffee, if you're bold enough. Um, And they give something up in order to share in the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Lent not only gives us the opportunity to give something up, but we give something up in order to make room Uh, for something new, to add something like prayer and study, to grow closer to Christ in preparation for Easter. Lent is a a time that is ripe for repentance, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. It's a time of purification um, and redemption. It's a time of self-sacrifice and discipline as we confront our sin, confess our guilt, and seek repentance for our lives. The season of Lent is crucial to our Christian development because it invites us to look inward and ask essential questions of self-introspection. Questions like, what is in my life that should no longer be in my life? What do I need to change? What steps do I need to take to better follow Jesus? How might I become holy as God is holy? As we navigate these questions, we are invited to reflect on the condition of our hearts In our exploration, we can realize our need for God's divine grace in our own lives and find assurance that we have indeed been forgiven. As I mentioned, Ash Wednesday is the day that marks the beginning of this season of Lent. We make the ashes by burning the palm branches that are used from the previous year's celebration of Palm Sunday. And Palm Sunday is a day that occurs the Sunday before Easter. And on this day, palm branches are waved around often by young children, sometimes adults, as they parade throughout the sanctuary. Uh, This symbolizes Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. As the crowds sang his praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, holy is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. 
Coincidentally, the ashes created from the burned palm branches are used, again, on Ash Wednesday. We see this relationship between the palms and the ashes. And we see it um, lived out in one of my favorite hymns, Sunday's Palms Are Wednesday's Ashes. The song says this, Sunday's palms are Wednesday's ashes, as another Lent begins. Thus we kneel before our Maker in contrition for our sins. We have marred baptismal pledges, in rebellion gone astray. Now returning, seek forgiveness. Grant us pardon, God, this day. Ashes have been used as a sign of repentance, mourning, and fasting throughout Scripture. When Tamar was raped by her half-brother, she put ashes on her head and tore the long robe that she was wearing. She put her hand on her head and went away, crying aloud as she went. 2 Samuel 13, 19. In Job 42, 5 through 6, it says this, I had heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes see you. Therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. The prophet Daniel says in Daniel 9, 3, Then I turned to the Lord to seek an answer by prayer and supplication with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. Jesus also talks about repenting in sackcloth and ashes in Matthew eleven twenty one. So we see this symbolism of ashes throughout Scripture. But on Ash Wednesday, we ceremonially place um, ashes in the sign of a cross on people's foreheads or sometimes on their hands. And the minister will often recite the words, repent and believe in the gospel, or they might use the words, you are from dust and to dust you shall return. On this day... We confront our own mortality, our fragile nature as human beings. And we're also invited to confess our sins before God and receive God's forgiveness. It's an especially somber and stark service. Dark colors, low lights. And so as we begin this Lenten season, I want to actually explore five different ways to enter into the season of Lent this Ash Wednesday. Number one is fasting. I know um, I've already talked about this a little bit, but a lot of people give up something for Lent um, just because it's really difficult, and they feel like maybe they have to suffer or punish themselves by giving something up that's really challenging. Uh, Others might choose to give something up because it's really easy, so you might choose to give up broccoli or asparagus, for example, Um, and still others choose to give up something like dessert or soft drinks as a way to kind of enforce their diet so that they can lose weight. And all of these scenarios are not necessarily bad, but they don't really get at the heart of what this season is all about. You know, giving up chocolate for Lent or soft drinks is not really a bad thing, but I cannot honestly say that it um, always deepens your relationship with Christ. I cannot honestly say that that when I uh, do things like that, I'm participating in Lent as God intended. I I think it's important to fast something meaningful in order to truly enter into the season of Lent. Uh, One thing that I've heard a lot of people do lately is they'll fast social media. And I think that's actually a really um, great thing to give up. But it it, it should be a little difficult, but it shouldn't be a thing where we're punishing ourselves. Um, it should be something that will help us grow in our relationship with God. That's how I think we need to see fasting. Um, what's the goal? The ultimate goal needs to be how can we fast in order to grow in our relationship with God. Uh, the second thing that we can do is prayer. I think it's a very important component of entering into the Lenten season, uh, this discipline of prayer. Prayer is one of the ways that we communicate and connect with God. And so engaging in daily prayer allows us to draw deeper into the relationship with Christ that we are striving to have as Christ followers. And it's really essentially um, a means of grace that involves us getting to know the God who formed us and created us and breathed life into us. And so prayer is a really important thing that we can do. Uh, number three is, is study. Communal study and Bible study, uh, daily Bible study, are great practices to adopt during the season of Lent. Um, studying uh, Scripture, 
is an extremely important aspect of attending to the means of grace in our daily lives. Um, study invites us not only to expand our minds, but also our hearts as we all uh, dive deeper into our understanding of God. And so maybe this Lenten season, you might consider taking time each day to read through a devotional Lenten study or, or book or read through certain sections of Scripture, of the Bible, in order to connect and grow uh, this Lenten season. And then the fourth uh, thing is, is worship. Worship is an important component uh, of the Christian life. It allows us to enter into God's presence and receive God's grace through word and sacrament. And during the Lenten season, attending Sunday worship is a way for us to enter into communal fellowship as we celebrate what God has done, is doing, and will do in our lives and in the life of the church. Uh, Through music, prayer, scripture, sermons, sacraments, and invitations, we we, um, can experience God in a deeper way this Lenten season. And then finally, reflection. Making time for reflection is so important. Um, such an important practice and discipline during the season of Lent, let alone just all throughout the year. Uh, whether it's through silence, prayer, journaling, or taking time to just reflect on your own individual life, um, that allows us to realize what might be holding us back from being closer to God. Reflection is, is really an important process that exposes the things in our lives that we might need to get rid of, that we might need to purge in order to grow in our relationships with the God um, who has created us and loves us. So overall, uh, this Lent, I encourage you to find ways to deepen your relationship with Christ. So you might do this through one of these traditional Lenten disciplines of the church, through fasting, prayer, almsgiving, um, through study, worship, reflection. But I, I pray that you might find ways to answer Um, Some of those questions that force you to look inward. May you experience the divine grace of Jesus Christ. May you experience God's forgiveness. And may you be transformed.